Dear viewers, welcome to the IT Governance Corner. My name is Veronica Rose, and I have a special guest for you today. He is from Kenya, and he will share with us his profile. Norbert? Thank you, Veronica. Really a pleasure to be in this channel. One thing I'll first start by saying is it's commendable the way you're sharing knowledge across the continent and even across the world with experts from all areas. That is just superb. Keep up the good job. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Norbert Mutinda. I've been in the IT field for the last 14 years. I'm certified in different areas. Um, I'm a certified ethical hacker. I'm an ISO 27001 lead auditor. I'm also a business continuity plan and implementer expert. Never not mentioning the Microsoft as well as the Linux area. I've specialized in them as well. So in a nutshell, that's who I am. And I'm happy to be here. Thank you, Norbert, for sharing with us your profile. So our topical discussion today is on IT governance. And uh, we both understand the criticality of enterprise IT governance in the organizations. So on the same note, our viewers would love to hear from you why the adoption of IT governance is still a challenge today in organizations. In a nutshell, how would you sell IT governance to the board? Very good question, Veronica. One of the things that you need to understand is the language that you speak to the board. The language that you're going to articulate to them will determine whether they will accept or reject the proposal that you have. When you talk to the executive board, what you need to focus in is in terms of the business goals. How will the new thing that you're bringing in going to impact it? Is it going to increase it? Is it going to determine the output and so forth? That's how you frame it, okay? So let me first start off by saying, you need to be clear about what the enterprise IT governance is, why does the firm need it, how it's going to be implemented, when and by whom. I am happy to say that one of my colleagues and a very good friend, Mark Thomas, actually revisited this topic earlier this month when he spoke about the difference between governance and management. That is something very critical. And if you missed out, please go back and review that video because it will give you the foundation of what I'm about to discuss, okay? So, Veronica, how I look at it is, what is the secret for the Fortune 100 companies? Why do we have a list that is always constant for a long period? What special item do these companies have that keep them to be at the top notch of their fields. And the secret is they are using success by design. It is not by luck, okay? What do I mean by this? When we look at the typical organo chart for any organization, currently 90% of the organo charts are as follows. I'll describe two. You'll have the executive board then it will cascade down to the head of departments, then the department team members. That is a typical one. So you'll have the executive board, COO, then department heads of the team, okay? For the Fortune 100 companies, there's an additional field. So there will be the executive board, there will be corporate governance, which entails enterprise IT governance within it then now you will be able to have the COO head of departments and the department team members. So the question is, why sh should the board members accept to increase another level into the organo chart? And this is the key. One thing I'll tell, and you will agree with me, Veronica, a doctor cannot perform an operation on themselves. An auditor cannot audit themselves. A lawyer representing a client cannot go and make the final verdict. That's why we need a judge. A CIO cannot govern and at the same time manage the IT department. All these are conflict of interest, which can be seen on the initial organo chart. 
where we only have the executive board giving out the business goals. Then we have the head of departments coming up with departmental strategies that are meant to be aligned to meet the business goals. The big question is, where is that alignment? Who does the alignment? That is what is lacking. And that is the key that the Fortune 100 companies are actually maximizing it with that extra layer of the corporate governance that encompasses of the enterprise IT governance in it. Okay? So what benefit do we get once we introduce this? When we have the corporate governance, in terms of IT, we'll have a strategic execution and management of resources, risk, performance that will lead to benefit realization that meet the stakeholders' needs. Let me break that down simpler for you to understand. When you have, for example, you want to go and listen to an orchestra in a music concert, you have talented individuals. There's one who's playing the guitar, there's one playing the piano, there's one playing the bass and so forth, okay? All these individuals represent the different departments. So when people are hired, they're hired due to their merit because they're qualified. But now, if you can imagine if you go to an orchestra and everyone is playing their tune at this different times, it will become noise won't be enjoyable at all. But when you look at it in the other side, if there's someone, there's a conductor who stands in front of them and tells them when a specific individual is meant to play a tune, then you have beautiful music. It becomes a symphony. That is what enterprise IT governance does. That is a secret for the Fortune 100. They are able to coordinate individuals and ensure that the, each and every departmental goal is supported by the IT strategy to meet the business goals. So you get value IT out of it, okay? So when you put it that way in front of uh, the board of governance, you have not used any IT jargon. You've just explained to them how will I assist you in increasing your revenue your performance, managing your risks, and as well as managing your resources to get the value add that you need by the end of the business. When you put it that way, you'll get the buy without any doubt, okay? So in a nutshell, all you need to do is understand what IT governance or enterprise IT governance is. It is not a departmental function. It is a corporate function where each department has to participate and you have also the CIO who will be accountable to that board in regards to the technology that you have. I'll give you an example. Even when we're dealing with the Formula One rally cars, you may have the best car, you may have the best driver, you may have the best support team, but if they don't coordinate, you will spend more time at the pit stop compared to your competitors. And it only takes a few seconds for you to lose the race, okay? So yes, that is it now, Veronica. That's how you handle it and how you tackle it. Right. Thank you so much, Nobat, for sharing with us. You really detailed everything, thank you. And to our viewers, thank you so much for watching. If you want to watch more of these and learn more, just hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on the upcoming sessions. Thank you, Nobat. Thank you too, Veronica. Have a nice one.